Hello, my name is Stephen Pratchner. I'm one of the program managers on the PIX team at Microsoft. In this video, I'll be covering some of the features of the sampling profiler that is built into timing captures. The sampling profiler is useful in several scenarios. For example, analyzing samples can help you get a sense for what code is executing in areas of your title that are only sparsely instrumented with PIX events. Samples can also tell you which functions in your title are called the most often or take the most time to execute. To use the sampling profiler, select the CPU samples checkbox before starting a capture. You'll also need to select one of the three predefined sampling intervals. These intervals allow you to make a trade-off between the amount of precision you'll get in the samples that are collected compared with the runtime overhead that your title will incur. So choosing a lower sampling interval has relatively low overhead, but also gives you a relatively small set of samples to work with. Choosing the higher interval gives you much more precision, but at a cost of higher overhead. So I'm gonna go ahead and switch to a capture that I had taken previously and focus in on my main thread. It's called app main. Now, as you can see, my frames of CPU time are defined by instances of this PIX event named main loop. And I want to draw your attention to this frame here. It looks different than the frames around it in a few different ways. So first of all, it appears to be longer in duration than the others. And presumably, I have found this long frame by graphing the duration of my frame marker in the metrics view and then navigating to this point in the timeline. The other thing that looks different about this frame is the presence of this additional update enemy positions event that either doesn't occur at all in the surrounding frames or its duration is so short that it doesn't appear at my zoom level. But unfortunately, I haven't added any additional instrumentation in the form of calls to PIX begin event and PIX end event underneath update enemy positions to help me figure out what's going on. But fortunately, I collected CPU samples when I took this capture. So I'm going to use CPU samples analysis to figure out what update enemy positions is doing when it's running so long. Samples analysis will be done down in this range details view. The first thing I need to do is populate the range details view with the sample data. So because I know I want to focus in on update enemy positions, I'll select it, right click, and then say set range details time range to match selected events. Then what I'm going to do is select sampled functions from the items to show dropdown. So now what I'm looking at is a stack tree that was built by aggregating together the call stacks for all of the samples that were collected during the time in which update enemy positions was running. And by default, this tree contains the data across all threads and all cores. But because I know I want to focus in just on my app main thread, I'm going to use this group by dropdown in the display options pane to group my aggregated stack tree by threads. So now my app main thread conveniently bubbles to the top. And now I can start to look down through my call tree to see what's going on. And when I get to this function named update enemy positions, I see a few things that are worrisome from a performance perspective. Specifically, these calls to mem copy and to operator new. So clearly, I'm doing some memory manipulation in the middle of a frame, which generally you want to avoid as it's a relatively expensive operation. I can also use this inclusive count column to see that I'm doing this numerous times 79 calls to mem copy and 59 calls to operator new. 
So the next thing I want to do is find out where in my update enemy positions I'm making these calls that are causing my performance issue. So to do that, I'll select the function name in the range details view, and I'm going to switch the element details view from details to source analysis. And here's my update enemy positions function. And as I start to scroll down, you begin to see some lines highlighted in red. So these tell me the specific lines that my samples landed on within update enemy positions. And as you can see, 114 samples landed on this uh, constructor of a string of vec uh, vector of strings, and some others landed uh, in looping through that vector afterwards. So this tells me specifically where in my function I'm doing the mem copies and the calls to new that are causing my performance issue. I also wanted to cover a few of the options you can use to customize the source analysis view. So by opening up the display options pane, I can see that I can switch the default uh, margin from showing raw sample counts to showing percentages. So if I look at this on a percentage basis, I can see that about 62% of my samples landed on this vector constructor. Now by default, Pixel find your C++ source files based on information stored in your PDBs. So if you've moved source files around for some reason or you're on a machine that's different from the machine you originally took the capture on, uh, it may be the case that PIX won't be able to find your C++ source files. So to help with that, use this source paths control in display options. So by clicking on the, the button here, I bring up a standard Explorer window that lets me navigate around uh, and pick some additional folders. And when those are added to source paths, PIX will look in those folders to resolve the references to your C++ source files as well. So in summary, we've used CPU samples analysis to determine what was going on in a portion of our title that had no additional PIX event instrumentation. We use the source analysis view to drill in specifically to the lines of source within the function that were causing my performance problems. And we've also looked at a few options that we can use to customize the display of the source analysis view. Thank you for listening.